Hello YouTube, uh, about well, almost four months ago I went out and I bought myself a Surface 3. Uh, the reason I bought myself a Surface 3 was, well, basically I like new things. Uh, but also, last year my favorite thing in the world was a Surface 2, which I bought uh, whilst traveling. And uh, I was very much surprised by the Surface 2. It was, you know, really nice, slim, light device that I could bring with me everywhere. And it allowed me to do a lot of things that I wanted to do. Like uh, with the type cover, I can type things out. It allowed me to connect USB to, to bring over uh, photos uh, from my camera and do things like that. Ultimately, uh, the Surface 2 let me down because it's, well, it's this didn't run uh, for Windows, it uh, ran Windows RT and Windows RT is just not good enough um, and you know the, the Windows Store is just a very 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 bad place to be. So when Microsoft announced the Surface 3 back in March I got really excited and I spent the six weeks between the announcement and the time that I could actually buy it uh, trying to figure out, okay, what is it? What can I do with it? And, you know, is it powerful enough to, to play Civilization 5? Is it good enough to, to actually do the typing? Because I found that while I could type with the Surface 2 on a desk, uh, the Type Cover 2 was too wobbly to, to use on my lap so a lot of questions uh, also you know did I need the type cover did I need the pen um, which version should I buy so I did a lot of research looking into the new chipsets the Atom Cherry Trail and uh, trying to figure out the graphics capabilities and things like that uh, and it's been almost four months since I bought it and I thought I just um, sit down and tell you about all the stuff that's in this and uh, if I think it's a good idea for you to buy one. So first of all this is the Surface 3. Uh, look more closely at it in a bit but as you can see, it is very much like the Surface 2 in appearance. Slightly different aspect uh, ratio with the 3x2 rather than the 16x9. Uh, and also geared it more towards a uh, portrait uh, orientation because I got the Windows button down here. Uh, along with this, you can buy the excellent, excellent type cover. I didn't buy the type cover 3 to start with. I bought just the Surface 3 and then I used my type cover 2, which works just fine. Uh, eventually, though, I found this red type cover 3 and I thought, oh, that's cool. I want one of those. And I bought it. And I'm very glad I did because it turns out that the Type Cover 3 is a lot better than the Type Cover 2. Eventually, again, I came across the pen, the red pen, which I could use with my red Type Cover. Uh, and I bought that. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I haven't actually figured out why I, I bought it, except, you know, I, I could buy it and, uh, yeah. yeah. I haven't really used it. So this pen has ended up at home, but this thing has been going around with me quite a lot uh, in the past couple of months. So first things first, uh, what is this? Well, as I said, this is the Microsoft Surface 3, and this is the version with uh, 4 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of solid state drive. Uh, I think it is important to actually go for the more expensive version 
that I have here with the 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs uh, disk space. Partly because the disk space really gets very crowded very quickly if you have less than 128 gigabytes. Even 128 gigabytes is is quite crowded. Uh, but possibly more importantly, the four gigabytes of RAM, and that's because the graphics chips on these uh, Atom processors shares the RAM with the uh, CPU. So if you just want to do simple word processing and stuff like that, then yeah, two gigs of RAM would probably be enough. If you want to do gaming, specifically 3D gaming, which you can do, uh, not extremely well, but you can do it, uh, then I think you really need the four gigs of RAM because the graphics are gonna take, you know, like two gigs of RAM quite easily and uh, if you have just two gigs of RAM to start with well it won't work and you can play for instance Civilization 5 on this thing uh, I believe you would be very hard pressed to play Civ 5 on the two gig version because it would run out of memory and probably crash I don't even know if it will start so there you have it Another reason for the extra RAM is of course multitasking. So say you are surfing the web, browsing, uh, you're using your favorite browser and you have multiple tabs open, uh, it kind of eats memory quite quickly. Uh, on the other hand, you don't really want to do that because one thing, one thing where this doesn't work very well is multitasking. So if you have like you know multiple tab browsing uh, in Firefox or specifically Chrome uh, it gets pretty slow pretty quickly a couple of pages with a lot of ads and stuff and it slows right down uh, so multitasking not this machine's strong suit actually a uh, couple of things that I wanted to find out uh, when I when I bought this uh, was basically is it powerful enough to be the perfect tablet slash laptop convertible thing well I, I had a couple of use cases that I wanted to know first of all I wanted to know if it was as light and slim as the Surface 2 so I could easily bring it with me because that's one thing that I love with the Surface 2 uh, is it powerful enough to run, you know, Photoshop, which I use a lot, uh, and and I want to be able to use when I'm traveling? Uh, is it good enough to use on my lap as a laptop, typing out things? Uh, can I do, you know, spot of simple programming on it because I'm a software guy and I. Uh, sometimes I feel like making software. Uh, can I do that on it? And also, finally, can I play some serious games like Civilization V? Well, first of all, the physical aspects. Uh, this is the Surface 3 with the Type Cover 3. Very nice. This is the Surface 2 with the Type Cover 2. Also very nice. Uh, as you can see, the size is very similar. Uh, the thickness is virtually identical. And I can tell you that the weight is also very, very similar. So size-wise, the physical aspects, it does kind of feel the same uh, as the old Surface. 2, the new Surface 3. Uh, if you look at it, it is slightly different of course. It has this change aspect ratio, it means that it is uh, slightly wider on that side and not as high or other way around if you actually have it in portrait mode. The Surface 2 is wider and the Surface 3 is 
higher. Uh, we also changed the position of this Windows button, um, supposedly uh, to show that the Surface 3 is more of a portrait kind of thing. Well, you're supposed to hold it like this and take notes with your pen. I don't know. Uh, other things that have changed on the Surface 2. You had these speakers on the side. Here. On the Surface 3, you have speakers on the front. And they are actually slots here in the side of the glass. Which I find is... I find that these speakers are not as good as the Surface 2 speakers. And also because they kind of make a gap here. Uh, it just makes the build quality on the Surface 3 feel slightly less than the build quality on the Surface 2. It just feels that it doesn't quite fit even you know if it's supposed to be like this. So it's not an error really. Uh, because they changed the aspect ratio or the from being mostly uh, landscape to portrait, they changed the buttons around. So we have buttons here instead of here and on the side for the Surface 2. And also they changed instead of the uh, old charging port that was proprietary pogo connection thing they have a micro usb which is very nice they still have the full size usb 3 port which is nice and the mini display port which is also nice one thing that is really annoying with the surface 3 is the headphone jack which is here and if you have it on Like this, the headphone jack is down here, which isn't a problem if you're sitting like this at a desk or something, but it is actually a problem if you are traveling. Uh, say you're in an air, airplane seat uh, and you have a, you know, some kind of cord sticking out here, connector for the headphone, that actually can quite easily catch in the armrest on the side and if you're traveling by bus or train it can actually <laughs> catch on whoever is sitting next to you. Uh, I've had a couple of incidents where I kind of got stuck. Nothing you know nothing happened but it's slightly annoying and I can't really see why they did that but otherwise uh, you got the one two three positions of the uh, kickstand. Surprisingly useful uh, another thing that is surprisingly useful is this extra magnetic strip on the uh, type cover which actually means that it is a lot more stable. I mean this type cover looks very similar to the old type cover but the keys have a bit more travel and it is a lot sturdier. So. I have no problems using the Type Cover 3 and the Surface 3 on my lap. It feels sturdy, it feels steady. The old uh, setup just kept wobbling around because it didn't have this extra stability and also extra rigidity of the new Type Cover. So while I felt that I couldn't use the Surface 2 with the Type Cover 2 in kind of laptop mode, uh, the Surface 3 works perfectly well and I've written quite a lot of text on it quite happily so kudos to Microsoft really good upgrade I don't particularly like this placement it's better now that I upgraded to Windows 10 uh, because there's no charms bar so I don't do this anymore uh, because uh, when I did this in Windows 8, I would accidentally touch this and go somewhere else. Uh, it's still a bit annoying if you're watching a movie or something. It's quite easy to touch this when you're holding it like this in portrait mode. It's quite easy to touch this and get sent to, you know, the, the start screen or something. Annoying. I don't really see why, why they put it there, but that's the way it is. 
So uh, that's the physical side. I mean, apart from this, still a great screen. Very nice, very bright, very responsive, uh, and uh, I love it. And as I said, the type cover is type cover three is very very good. So if we um, start with the uh, office things, uh, yes, it runs Office very well. Uh, Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, that kind of thing, no problem whatsoever. As I said earlier, multitasking is not this machine's strong suit. And also the, the kind of limited screen space means that you're really not going to want to have multiple programs open uh, side by side. You can, but it, it's kind of hard to read. Well, you know, I'm getting old, so maybe my eyesight is not that good. But coupled with the Type Cover 3, uh, you actually have a fairly decent kind of laptop experience. The type cover is, is very nice with uh, good travel in the keys and very sturdy. Uh, and if you have it like this in the kind of locked on protection mode here, uh, it, it is very usable even in laptop uh, on your lap, which is nice. When it comes to running Photoshop, I use Photoshop CC uh, Creative Cloud. Uh, it works very well, surprisingly well, actually. Uh, I don't, you know, really do fancy stuff. I, I usually open my uh, photos in Bridge and I check them with uh, Camera Raw. And sometimes I open up a photo to do some light editing before I publish it on my blog or. or send it off to my mother basically uh, so it really works quite well for um, for photoshopping programming is another matter you can use this for light coding uh, it's no problem installing you know eclipse and the jdk if you're a java guy or uh, microsoft uh, studio if you're a Microsoft kind of uh, person. It takes ages installing the uh, uh, Visual Studio, but it does work. And uh, you know, also doing easy light web development, JavaScript, and stuff like that, no problems. Obviously, it's just text that you edit. There is an issue, however, if you want to run things because uh, the Atom processor, and I, I might have you know, misunderstood this, but it seems like the Atom processor, the Cherry Trail processor, doesn't contain the virtualization extension instructions that you get in the more expensive Core i or, or uh, M, uh, Intel M processors. That doesn't really matter unless you want to emulate something. Uh, usually that would be like, uh, you know, if you want to install virtual computers on your system and you don't want to do this on that on, on this kind of machine anyway, so no problem. But if you want to develop for Android, for instance, which you might want to, uh, then it is actually a problem running the virtual machine. Also, because of the lack of these virtualization instruction sets, uh, it seems that you can't really run an Android emulator or simulator like Amiduos, uh, which I wanted to do. You know, you start Amiduos, which basically makes this into turns this into an android tablet i thought well that's great you can you know get the best of both worlds and no you can't really really can't it i it doesn't actually i never got it to start properly and uh, even if it would start i tried it on a laptop with a pentium uh, processor which has the virtualization instructions and it's really really slow so if you want to do that, you'd need something like a, a Surface Pro. So, yes, you can do the 
word processing, powerpointing, photoshopping, uh, extremely light programming, but uh, you're not going to do any serious Java development on this unless you have a phone attached that you can run your code on. Talking about desktop use on your, your Surface 3, uh, there is a couple of things that you should be aware of. Uh, Windows software usually isn't very touch friendly. Uh, they, they have, with the new Windows 10 uh, Word uh, Office kind of uh, products, they have actually made those more touch friendly, but all the other software is still, you know, basically mouse based. Uh, which is very much true for the Adobe uh, suite of, of, of uh, software. So if you want to use like Photoshop or, or Bridge or, or Camera Raw, uh, you need a mouse. Uh, you really do, <laughs> unless you have really tiny fingers, which I don't because I'm a big guy. Uh, I use the touchpad on my side cover. It's not brilliant, but it works. Uh, I also usually, when I'm traveling, have a mouse with me. So when I'm at the hotel, I can use the mouse to do some of the more detailed work. But it is a pain using your, your fingers on the desktop still. Uh, I can't really say, I got Windows 10 on this, but I can't really say there's a much difference between the Windows 10 and the Windows 8. Uh, it's still, you know, the desktop is not where you want to be uh, with your fingers. It's quite hard to, to do anything. So that's uh, one thing to take into consideration. Uh, and it's also one thing that I thought I might use a pen for, but I just don't like using the pen like that. I, uh, I don't know why. I, I prefer a mouse or my fingers. The pen is not good. Don't buy the pen. The ability to play games like Civilization V uh, and uh, XCOM Enemy Unknown or UFO were really big motivators for me to get this rather than you know any kind of tablet. Uh, I can do that obviously on a laptop but I wanted something that was ultra portable and light like this and still be able to play those games. I, I don't play too much uh, these casual games like Candy Crush or stuff like that. It turns out that yes you can indeed play Civilization 5, Tomb Raider, um, Starcraft 2, Di Diablo 3, XCOM Anime Unknown, Grim Fandango, very nice games, games that I play a lot. And you can play them on this. You have to turn down, you know, the graphical settings way down. It's kind of hard to play on full resolution. Civilization 5, you need to play on full resolution. It seems to crash on me when I don't. But otherwise, it's quite playable. And I've been, made a bunch of videos uh, to show this. I'm just gonna cutting short uh, snips of, of those videos to, to show you uh, that it is indeed possible to play these games on the Surface 3. That said, a uh, couple of things you should you know consider. The Surface 3 is not a gaming machine. Uh, you can play these games, they're quite enjoyable. Uh, some of them, most of them actually, need uh, a mouse to, to, to work well, uh, that's no problem. You've got a USB port. You can, you know, stick in a normal mouse uh, or a wireless uh, mouse, and it's no problem. It's a bit of an issue if you're traveling. Civilization V works fine with the touch interface. The only thing that really annoys me is that it is really hard to attack city states for some reason uh, because when you are you know, just about to take the city-state and you click on the city-state uh, to, to move your troops 
in there. You are transported to the hello, uh, it's you again. Do you want to negotiate peace screen uh, and not the actual movement? So that's annoying, but otherwise it works very well. You should think about the RAM though. Uh, if you want to play these modern games, very, very few modern games don't actually use a 3D engine. Uh, even Civ 5 uses a 3D engine. Uh, so you need the full gigs of RAM. That's, that's one. Two, if you start installing things like Photoshop, uh, the Microsoft Visual Studio and a bunch of games. The 128 gigabytes of SSD in this is gonna go away very, very quickly. Uh, good news, or, or slightly less bad news, is that because the SSD in this is so bad, it's actually very, very slow. Uh, it's not too expensive or even hard to uh, just buy a micro SD memory card, uh, which I've done with this, for you know 6428 gigabytes with almost the same speed on it. So I've got a micro SD SanDisk uh, card in here, which got up to 80 megabits per second transfer rate which is not too far off from the 110 or so megabit transfer rate of the SSD. So, you know, you, there's no problem installing software on the micro SD card rather than the SSD, the internal SSD. The speed difference is negligible uh, and it works quite well and you could, you know, I don't know how big a uh, micro SD card you can have on this, but I bought a 64 gig one and it worked well. I have all the games installed on that and, and it's quite playable still. So that's a top tip. Uh, otherwise, uh, take a look at the videos and uh, enjoy. <laughs>
One more thing, uh, it is now end of August 2015, uh, which means that Windows 10 is out. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I got the opportunity to upgrade my Surface 3 from Windows 8.1 Update 1 to Windows 10. And of course, I did immediately. And I ran into some problems. Uh, the Surface slowed down to a crawl very often. I couldn't play games like Civ 5 anymore. Uh, and I read about uh, this kind of stuff on the internet. And it turns out there was people had problems with something called Superfetch, which was taking up loads of RAM. Uh, so I followed some instructions on the net and I turned that off. And after that, it has been behaving a lot better. Uh, 
I don't know if Superfetch is an issue in general because I got Windows 10 on my main computer as well and I had no you know RAM issues on that okay so on that computer I have 16 gigs of RAM so maybe it's not surprising that I haven't had any problems but I checked the processes and uh, the system process did not take uh, you know a gig of RAM which it tried to do on, on my Surface 3 so it might be a thing might be an issue with the Surface 3 it might be an issue that uh, it does something on your or you on your system initially and once it's done it it's not a problem anymore I don't know if you google it superfetch uh, Windows 10 uh, you can easily find the instructions on how to disable it if it does pro prove to be a problem uh, and if you if you upgrade if you have a surface 3 and upgrade it to Windows 10 and you feel that it is really slow you can do you know control add delete and check all this processes and if the system process is taking a lot of memory then you can try this uh, super fetch uh, fix uh, now though you know a couple of weeks in it works very well I'm not entirely happy with the changes made in Windows 10 uh, because they kind of made it less of a tablety experience and more of a desktopy experience uh, and although they try to make the desktop more finger friendly uh, I still feel that it isn't as finger friendly as, as it used to be uh, so really uh, well I wouldn't go back to Windows 8 but uh, it's it's not as obvious an upgrade as it was on my desktop I'm very happy with Windows 10 on my Surface 3 I probably could have been as happy just staying with Windows 8.1 update 1 so what I'm saying is uh, you don't really need to rush it unless you unless you want to so uh, is there really any reason to buy the Surface 3? well I think so one of the use cases I have is I like to travel a lot I have a map of the world here and I like to travel and when I travel I like to take photos of everything and you know walking around taking pictures I need a bag for my camera this is a camera bag that I picked up in Tokyo actually and it's uh, pretty small pretty easy to carry it does contain my DSLR my Nikon 32 D3200 uh, with my 18 to 105 kit lens I also have my big zoom lens for that, you know, getting close to things. And then I have my fixed lens, fast lens for portraits and while well, doing things when the lighting is not so good. And in this bag, I also have my Surf 3. So, you know, when I'm out and about, I can just pop into a cafe or something sit down fire up bridge and take a look at the photos that i just taken which really is very nice and very helpful i can start my sorting process and everything there and because the surface 3 is powerful enough to run photoshop i can use the same kind of tools that i do at home but i can also bring it with me in this fairly small and light and easy to pack camera bag so yeah that's really one of the reasons why I wanted to buy the Surface 3 uh, a couple of conclusions um, first of all I'd like to say that the Microsoft Surface 3 is despite appearances not a tablet uh, this is because why well, it, it looks like a tablet and you know it kind of feels like a tablet it is 
thinner and lighter than the original iPad. Um, it doesn't behave like a tablet and, and that's that's a big issue uh, so if, if you have a tablet you want it to be there all the time you have it by the TV or on the coffee table uh, you have it by your bed you just always can pick it up and start using it and uh, that's the kind of power that the iPad brought when it came out, you just were amazed by this thing that was always ready, always on at a time when uh, computers took, you know, minutes to boot up. The Surface 3 doesn't take minutes to boot up, but it does take, you know, 15 seconds, 10, 15 seconds. Uh, and you really need to shut it down because it doesn't stay the battery power is not that good so if you just put it to sleep it will drain in 24 hours which means that this spends a lot of time connected to your wall being charged uh, and also uh, tablets you know you want these small simple uh, apps that you can just fire up and you know play Plants vs. Zombies or Candy Crush Saga or something like that. Uh, and you don't really get this kind of software on the surface. You do, but when you start playing with those kinds of apps, you get a sense of, ooh, you know, why do I play these crap things when I could be playing Civilization V or enemy unknown XCOM or, or Tomb Raider or, or some proper game uh, so it really isn't a tablet for that reason I actually bought this which is the Sony Xperia Z4 tablet and this on the other hand is a tablet it is crazy thin uh, you know, a lot thinner than the, the Surface 3. It is fast enough to play, actually, XCOM Enemy Unknown is on this uh, and it works fine. It's got a lot better battery stamina, uh, unless you're playing games on it. Uh, and, you know, this is what I have on my coffee table. This is something else. Which kind of brings me to, you know, should you buy this? Well, depends very much on what do you want to use it for. And I say want, because I can't really think of anyone who needs a Surface 3. Uh, the Surface 3 is not powerful enough to really do any kind of professional work. You can do a lot of it, a lot of work on it, but uh, it you know, if I were a professional something, I would probably get really annoyed with the lack of power here. Uh, so, for professional use, you're better off using something else. This feels like it's very much geared towards students. You got the pen and, you know, the kind of, oh, I'm gonna take notes kind of stuff. Uh, I can for the life of me not understand why people would want to use a pen to write on a tablet. It, it, you know, it sounds like a neat idea until you actually try it and realize, oh my god, I haven't used a pen and paper like that since 1995. I type a lot faster than I write with my hand with a pen and paper. And uh, you can actually read what I type, and you can't read what I write. So, for me, I don't really see uh, the point in using the pen. I did buy a pen for this, but can't really see a point for using it. Um, and if, if I was a student, I would probably think that I could get a lot of paper pads for the kind of money that I need to spend on this. And it does have the extra added bonus that when I get home, uh, I could, you know, type out the stuff that I wrote down during the classes, and that would really help my learning. So, uh, 
you don't need the surface. You might want the surface, like I want the surface for when I'm traveling, as I showed earlier. Uh, that's a good use case. I want the surface because it is good enough to do the things I want to do when I'm traveling. It is a very good travel companion. Uh, so that's what I wanted the Surface 3 for. It's also kind of a companion device. If I want to do something uh, like watching a video or, or, or typing out something or just checking my banking online, I can do this on this. I wouldn't necessarily do it on this because it doesn't have a proper keyboard but I can do it on my Surface 3 uh, without actually going in and firing up the big computer. So it is a good companion device. Uh, it is a very nice thing to have with you when you travel. When you travel. And uh, as I said earlier, you can, I can do all the, you know, the same workflow that, that I use on my main computer. I can use on this with Photoshop and Bridge and stuff like that. I can also type out a sizable amount of text on it because of the new and improved type cover. I do recommend the type cover, even if I don't recommend the pen. Uh, so you really need to think about why you would want this. Because if you're looking for a tablet, a really good tablet that you can do really good things on, then I recommend the Xperia Z4, which is a really, really nice tablet. So, yep, that's a conclusion. You don't need this. You might want it, but, mm, ah well. And making videos like this is really hard work. Uh, God, it takes hours actually it's taken me weeks to do this and you know recording and planning and thinking about what i'm gonna say and editing and all that stuff and in the end it isn't really that good to be perfectly honest so you know if not for me then for all the other guys out there who make these <coughs> videos uh, all the time some of them are professional, some of them are basically just people doing it for fun. Uh, and yeah, it's hard work. Uh, so do show your appreciation if you find a video that you really like. And yeah, that's it. Now I'm going to, I think I'm going to take a nap or something. Yeah, nap, nap, nap sounds good. Mm.